Well, this is the trap that Satan's trying to set for us, that all of us are going to be tempted on certain things and can go down this path. And what he's trying to do is to kill our fellowship with Jesus so we quit and we say, oh, man, I can't do this. There's a second part of his strategy, and the say idea of giving us some bait. What is the bait that he's going to use? The bait that he uses is the idea that in college, Satan will offer you many ways to relieve the ache of unmet God-given needs. You have God-given needs for friendship, for love, for acceptance, for being involved, for community, for peace, for significance, all kinds of things that God has hardwired into you. But Satan's going to bring about counterfeit ways to get you to think that, oh, these will meet my needs. This will make me feel included. This will make me feel special. Is there anybody who's a fly fisherman or fly fisherwoman, fly fisher person in the group? Fly fishing or likes to fly fish. Okay. Uh, it's one of the things I want to get to is fly fishing. I grew up in Arizona, so my idea of fishing is like fish sticks. Okay, that's, that's about as far as I get on it, you know. And uh, I've never caught a breaded fish. I don't know where you, you hunt for those ones. But uh, anyway, my friend Bob loves to fly fish. And when he goes out, he's one of these nuts. He likes to find out exactly what the time of the year is, the time of the day. And when he's fishing, when he catches his first fish, he takes out his little fish stomach pump, shoves it down the throat of the fish. Poor fish and takes out all the contents of the fish's stomach, splats it right down there on the rock, gives the fish a little throat lozenge and puts it back in the water, you know. And then he takes his pencil and he sifts through all the stuff that was in the fish's stomach. Then what he does is he takes his box of fly fish hooks, and that's a fish hook that's wrapped with wings and threads and all that stuff that are made to look like uh, insects. And he tries to see, is there anything in my box that matches what the fish have been feeding on that particular time of the day? Because as a fly fisherman, Bob knows that his goal is to trick the fish into thinking that this is real food. And that's exactly what Satan's strategy is. He wants to trick you into thinking that, man, going with those group of people will make you feel loved. It will make you feel accepted. Yeah, you'll be wanted, but there's a hook in it. So be aware of what his strategy is and that he's going to say this is something that will meet those aches that you have but there's going to be a hook. So those are his two strategies, all right? So what can we do to escape? What are some things that we might think about? Well, the first thing is to consider in the idea of escaping his plans is to take ownership of your God-given needs and develop God-honoring boundaries to get them met. That's a fancy word of saying find God-honoring ways to get those needs met. Guys, these are your feelings of loneliness, not mine. These are your feelings of stress. These are your feelings of freedom. You've got to learn how to manage those feelings. They're all under your skin. So can you find some ways to deal with those legitimate feelings in ways that honor God and help you? I want to suggest a few, okay? So as we think about the idea of loneliness, the first thing that I want to suggest is the idea that start looking for Christian fellowship at your college right now. And we're going to talk more about that in the next session, all right? Another thing is that remember how friendships are formed. Three things, proximity, time, and fun. Who are the people that Tony hung out with? The people in his dorm, people he lived around. Who are the people that Megan hung out with? The people in her dorm. See, the people you're closest to geographically, there's a greater chance that you will kind of make them your group. The people you spend more time with, you start to feel obligated and committed. Well, I guess this is my group because we always go to dinner together, we always go to lunch together, and so on. And people you have fun with. Doesn't mean that it's wrong to have fun with other people, but I'm just saying that if you're spending a lot of time with people right near you and having a lot of fun with them, don't be surprised if they become your group and it's hard for you to get away. So think through who are the kinds of people that you want to be close to, spend time with, and have fun with. All right? And lastly, get into a small group Bible study in your dorm or wherever as soon as you can. Because aside from God, your greatest need is for God's people. What are some practical thoughts on the idea of freedom? Some things that might help you there. First of all is to identify yourself as a Christian your first day in college. Now, I know why you wouldn't want to do that. I know you might be thinking, well, I don't want to be one of those Christians that talks all the time. I'm going to be a Christian who shows by how they walk. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm not going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing this. <laughs> but you know what? The longer you wait to prove your Christianity, the easier it is to hide your Christianity. And so what happens is that people will be incognito for a while, and then all of a sudden they start doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing, and the last thing you want to do is go, oh, by the way, uh, I'm a Christian. <laughs> They're going to go, uh-uh. 
So identify yourself as a Christian your first day on campus. Ask the resident assistant, hey, are there any Bible studies in this dormitory? Are there any Christian groups on my campus? Are there people from our floor that go to church? You start asking questions like that, they're going to go, oh, okay, you're, you, you take your faith seriously. Maybe you can get a big WWJD pillowcase that your mom's made for you, you know, and bring it to class. Hi, hey, how you doing, Bob? You know, that kind of thing. Or over the summer before college, make a nice big eight-foot wooden cross and just bring it into your room. Hey, Mac, how you doing? Yeah, okay. Mind if I put this over your bed? <laughs> hey, I just want you to know. Straight up. So identify yourself as a Christian that first day on campus because it'll help you feel accountable and not feel like, oh, I can do whatever I want. I can become anyone I want. Next is the idea to develop or strengthen your convictions around those sins that you turn to when you feel lonely and stressful. And we're going to do that in your spiritual aptitude section. All of us have these sins that haunt us, that we go back to. Well, become aware of what is that cycle for you and how does that work. Next, find a time management tool that works for you. You've got all this free time, but you've got all this work to do, don't you? Learn how to manage your free time with your responsibilities. That will help you stay accountable that, no, I don't have just time to do anything I want. I've got to get stuff done. And lastly, is to get into a small group Bible study in your dorm or whenever as soon as you can. Because aside from God, your greatest need is for God's people.